Hey, the MLS is back from international break. Um, this is week five. Most of the games will be played on Sunday. I mean, most of the games will be played on Saturday. There's only one game on Sunday, and that is LA Galaxy Portland Timbers. But there's some there's some games on Saturday, some interesting games on Saturday, and these are my games of the week, the games that I believe that you should be looking forward to. I'm sure you individually, you personally, you ha- probably have your own list of games that you looking forward to. But these are the games that I'm looking for the most to. And I'm going to tell you why. S- starting things off, Dallas and Chicago. Uh, Chicago fired. They're undefeated at home. But then you got a Dallas team that's looking pretty impressive. You got a guy in Jesus Ferreira who's among four players that are tied for a second in the league when it comes to scoring goals. You got the other three, um, Sebastian Drusi out of Austin, Lewis Morgan from New York Red Bulls, and Daniel Gaz- Gazdag. Excuse me if I pronounced the name wrong, but Daniel Gazdag in Philly. But the reason why this game is important, because I want to remind you as the viewer, Chicago is a world-class city. And because Chicago is a world-class city, it's very imperative for not only the Chicago Fire, but the MLS as a whole for Chicago Fire to be relevant, for Chicago Fire to be good, for Chicago Fire to be competitive. Now, now should we have a kind of expectation for the Fire to win a championship every year? Well, if you're a Chicago Fire fan, yes, but but it's just a general soccer fan or a general soccer spectator like me, no. But it's important that they make the playoffs every year. It's important that they are competitive every year. And here's another here's another um, interesting um, point I want to point out about the Chicago Fire. The future of Soldier Field. It's going to be for the Chicago Fire. Soldier Field is going to be the future exclusive home for only the Chicago Fire. Now, if you're not from Chicago, you may be wondering why. This is because the Bears, the Chicago Bears, the NFL team, they're getting ready to build a new stadium in Arlington Heights, which is about 30 minutes northwest of the city. Um... They purchased like 326 acres of land in 2021. Plus the the location they're they're going to at Arlington Heights, it used to be like a racetrack, like a racetrack stadium. I'm I'm not sure if it was a NASCAR stadium or not. Uh, I just know it used to be a racetrack stadium. And they purchased over 300 acres of land in 2021. And then this past month, and it, like in the middle of March, they hired an architect firm, which is the same architect firm that built the Las Vegas Raiders stadium, that huge black uh, Allegiant stadium in Las Vegas. The Bears hired the same firm that was responsible for building that stadium. Now, if the Bears wasn't serious about building a new stadium in Arlington Heights, They wouldn't have purchased 326 acres of land in 2021, and they wouldn't have followed through with hiring the same firm that built the Las Vegas Raiders stadium. That tells us that the Bears are getting are leaving. I mean, it's no it's no official announcement yet because they're still on. They're still on contract for the rest of this decade, but I believe that they can break that um, lease in 2026. And if they break the lease in 2026, they will owe the city or whoever's in charge of the stadium, Soldier Field, they will owe them like 84 million to break that lease. But <laughs> now this is the NFL. This is like a billion dollar organization, like $84 million. <laughs> that's probably nothing. To um, that's probably like pocket money to the Bears. So the Bears aren't they're not they're not deterred by that at all. So that's just to, so that's the reason why I point that out because 
In another video, I said, Chicago Fire, you are the face of Chicago. You are the soldiers of Chicago. Soldier Field is for you. It's your home. The Bears are getting ready to leave. And once the Bears leave, um, hey, we can check. Soldier Field can be transformed into a real soccer specific stadium. And I, there's so many ideas. Like I got so many ideas to share. I'll have to do that in another monologue, though. But the fire is undefeated at home, and it's going to be interesting to see if they remain undefeated at home. Then we got an, another game to watch. NYCFC and Toronto. The kings of the MLS return to action. But my question is, which NYCFC team will we see? Will we see the one that played against Philly, the team that looked exhausted, the team that was outplayed, the team that was just dominated by that Philly defense? Or will we see the NYCFC team that played against Montreal, the team that was the aggressor, the team that was taking multiple shots, the team that looked like the better team on the field? Also, this is a warm up for the big CONCACAF matchup versus Seattle that's coming up next Wednesday. Now, these two, these, these, these are two world class cities. You know, I, many times I talk about New York, Chicago, Miami, and LA being um, big ethnically diversity, but Seattle has a huge Asian American and a huge Pacific Islander population too. Seattle is a world-class city also. So, you know, that CONCACAF matchup coming up on uh, Wednesday, April 6th, you know, this is a good warm-up for NYCFCs for them to get ready because Seattle's no pushover. And Seattle is a team that they feel like they don't get the respect that they deserve. So that's why... Seattle, it's, it's going to be a big matchup. And speaking of Seattle, they play Minnesota. Minnesota. Minnesota is a team that's arguably the best defensive team in the West. Like, I remember the New York Red Bulls game and their goalie, and their goalie, Dane St. Clair. I mean, he kept getting stops after stops after stops after stops. You cannot get an easy goal scored on St. Clair. In order for you to score against St. Clair, you got to bring your A game. And Seattle in general, I think Seattle's been a huge letdown to start the season. They lost to Nashville, like a team in Nashville, all the way in the Southeast, travel all the way to the Northwest, and they still beat Seattle. They lost to Salt Lake. A Salt Lake team, which is not a pushover. A Salt Lake team that really is a top five team in the league. They're not only a top five team in the West. Salt Lake is a top five team in America, in North America, because including Canada. So Salt Lake, they're, they're, they're a top football club in North America. They also lost a close game to LA Galaxy. Then they couldn't hold a lead against Austin. They allowed Austin to tie the game like in the 70th, like in the 70 minutes, somewhere between 70 and 80 minutes. So, you know, Seattle got to get it together because the, the Western Conference is tough. You can't afford to blow leads, Seattle. And I think the international break was probably good for, 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 for the Sounders. Maybe they needed the break just to, just to, you know, recollect themselves, you know, Reassess their priorities. Figure out what they're not doing right. A win against Minnesota, followed by a win against NYCFC in the CONCACAF tournament on Wednesday, April 6th. That would, those, those, those two wins would definitely help give Seattle the energy and the life that they desperately need to carry on for the season. Because so far, Seattle, they, they, they've been looking kind of dead in my opinion. They just need life, in my opinion. They need like a confidence booster. England, New York Red Bulls. 
It looks like Lewis Morgan has cooled off since his hat trick performance. Was that hat trick a fluke? Lewis Morgan, you really look like a guy who was determined to be the face of not only New York football, but Major League Soccer. Now, I understand you're, you're, you're definitely not going to score a hat trick every performance. But you can score goals. Carlos Vela in, in Los Angeles, LAFC, he scored a hat trick to start the season. And he's been continuing to score goals ever since. Lewis Morgan, I think in order for this, if, if the New York Red Bulls is truly going to be able to compete against NYCFC and Philly and Atlanta in the East, you have to be the guy. You have to be the Carlos Vela or the Chitarito for the East Coast. You have to be that guy. And then speaking of New England, what happened to Gustavo Bo? When, when look, New England has four points to start the season. In the first five games, they have four points. But last year, in the first five games, they had eight points. This is because, in my opinion, Gustavo Bo was really active. I have not heard anything about Gustavo Bo. I mean, yeah, New England, you, you got other guys in, um, in Gill and Bucks, Buxa, and Gill and Buxa, and you recently added Josie Altador, Josie Altador. But, yo, New England, when you were one of the, unst when you were like the most unstoppable team in the Major League Soccer last year, that was largely because Gustavo Bo was highly effective on the offensive side. And, it just seems like he's disappeared to start the season. That's what I'm saying. What happened to Gustavo Bo? In my honest opinion, if New England is going to be able to repeat what they did last year, listen to me, Revolution fans. If you're going to be just as good in 2022 as you were in 2021, Gustavo Bo has to return. We need the 2021 Gustavo Bo. Where is the 2021 Gustavo Bo? This Saturday, I want to see the 2021 Gustavo Bo come back to life. In New England, um, I mean, yeah, you, you won the supporter shield last year, but people are still not really scared of you. I mean, you're on a three-game playoff losing streak. You're one and done. Like, anyways... You're playing a regional four in New York Red Bulls. This is a good this this is a good opportunity for us to see the return of the 2021 Gustavo Bo. Lando, LAFC. Two high power teams. You know, Orlando needs to remind people that ATL and Nashville are not the only true contenders in the Southeast. Lando made the playoffs too last year now. Lando is just as competitive. And just as aggressive as ATL. Is it that Charlotte is getting more publicity and hype than Orlando? The only thing that Charlotte has is a billionaire owner. Charlotte shouldn't be getting more publicity than Orlando. But it's your job, Orlando, to it's your job, Orlando, to remind us this this Saturday. It's your job to remind us this Saturday that you are still one of the teams to beat, not only in the Southeast, but in the Eastern Conference. A win against LAFC, you definitely get people's attention. You will definitely get our attention, Orlando, by beating LAFC. It's going to be tough. In my opinion, I think this game is going to end up in a draw, like a 1-1 draw, 1-1, or 2-2 draw. I don't see... Any of these teams winning this game. I don't see Orlando or LAFC winning these, this game because <clears throat> both of these two teams are tough. LAFC, they're living up to the hype. You know, because usually it, throughout sports, when a lot of teams, I mean, when teams in general bring in a lot of uh, good free agent players, that team usually underachieves. Mainly because, you know, big free agent players comes with a lot of 
big egos and a lot of baggage. But it seemed like the free agent players that LAFC have brought in, it seemed like they put their ego and baggage to the side in order to help LAFC win a championship. This LAFC teams look focused. The players are playing together. Like when Carlos Vela went out to an injury earlier this season, the team didn't break down. The team didn't panic. They just filled in the gap. They picked up the slack. They, it, it, it just it, like it just seemed like they're not reliant on one guy to be great. It's a big team collective effort. Everybody wants to score. Everybody wants to play good defense. And everybody just wants to be great. That's why LAFC is one of the most exciting teams to watch in Major League Soccer. And lastly, the game of the week, the rivalry game, the Rocky Mountain Cup between Colorado and Salt Lake City. Now, this rivalry is just as intense as El Trafico. Now, you don't see people, uh, you don't see fans fighting in the game. It's not, it's, it's not crazy. But when the players go up against each other, when the players go up against each other, it's intense. Uh, I believe Real Salt Lake, they lead the all-time series with a 25, 15, and 11 record. But, you know, these are two teams that, both of these teams are, are definitely um, top seven, top, top seven teams in the, um, in the Western Conference. But they don't get the respect that they feel they deserve. Colorado and Salt Lake. Even though you're getting ready to go up against each other. Let me tell you why you don't get the respect that you believe you deserve. It's because you're playing altitude. You automatically have that home foot advantage. You're used to the high quality of air. Um, the high quality of air. I mean, the thinness of the air. You're used to breathing in that kind of environment. A team that's just coming in for a weekend, they can't adjust to that in a few hours. It's very difficult for them to adjust to that in a few hours. So Colorado and Salt Lake, even though you two are really focused on beating each other this Saturday, if you really want to get your respect that you believe you deserve, you have to start beating tough teams on the road. You have to win games in Los Angeles. You have to win games in Seattle. You have to win games in New York. You have to win games in Atlanta. You have to win games in Kansas City. You have to win games in Minnesota. You have to win games in Portland. That's when you get your respect. You get your respect based on wins on the road, not based on wins at home, because you have the altitude as your home field advantage. So whenever you win at home, people will not really take it too serious because you have that automatic home field advantage. Like what Salt Lake did in New England a couple weeks ago, coming from behind to win the game in the snow, Salt Lake, that is how you earn the respect. That is how you get the nation's attention. By those type of wins. You're on the road, you're in the East Coast, it's really cold and it's snowing. And you still come from behind to win the game. Salt Lake, that is how you earn the respect of the nation. That is how the nation will take you as a serious MLS Cup title contender. We need more wins like that, Salt Lake. Now, of course, every game won't be a come from behind. There's going to have to be some games on the road where you completely dominate. Where you go to Yankee Stadium in the Bronx and you beat NYCFC. The same for you too, Colorado. That opening loss against LAFC, that's not good. Now the Sunday's game, Portland, LA Galaxy. Um, you know, Portland is not a city that a lot of people are familiar with when it comes to just sports in general. I mean, yes, you had the Portland Trail Blazers with Damian Lillard, but it's just Portland is just the city where people view it as Seattle's little brother. So Portland, you're kind of similar to Colorado and Salt Lake. You also want your respect that you deserve. But Portland, 
you don't, you don't really have to though winning road games. I mean, yes, that's important, but it's not as important as Colorado and Real Salt Lake for you, Portland. You just have to beat good teams, continue to be good teams, like what you did in the playoffs, beating Colorado in the altitude in a playoff game, and you came from behind, taking NYC FC in the championship game to the wire, a game that had to that was resulted by um, free kicks, penalty kicks, Real Salt Lake. I mean, excuse me, Portland. You have to continue to beat good teams. You could, if you continue to consistently beat good teams, you will get the respect that you deserve. And it continues. It continues this Sunday. It's Chicharito, Doug, and Douglas Costa. LA Galaxy, on the other hand, those offseason moves that your arch rival, uh, LAFC, made, it's working. And LA Galaxy, if you're not careful, LAFC can really widen the gap between you and themselves. If you don't start winning, if you don't start getting points, LA Galaxy, if you want to keep up with LAFC, you at least have to have one point. No losses. No losses because LAFC is for real. So this game against Portland, a playoff contender, I mean, a championship contender in Portland, LA Galaxy, you have to bring your A game this Sunday. And so well, those are my games for the week. Those are the games I'll be paying close attention to. What games are you looking forward to the most this weekend? Week five, MLS is back. Let me know in the comment section.